I welcome you cordially to this book launch event of Up Campus Down Campus. This is a campus book on JNU by the senior journalist Obhijit Ghosh, who is presently employed with the Times of India. This is a, of course, it is a book launch. I don't deny that it is, but it is more of a reunion of the JNU. I can recognize many of us by faces, though most of us have put on cages and cages of weight and our faces no longer look that young anymore. But I think what really remains from about 30 or even 40 years of being in the campus and out of it is our expressions. We all talk and we all, you know, look upon the world in a much similar manner. We are all incorrigible JNUites. When you are in JNU, you never get over the disease, you never get over the campus really. Uh, I am Shushmita Dasgupta. I have done my Masters in Phil and PhD from JNU, CSSS. And uh, I uh, entered the campus in 1985, so I was basically an up-campus person. I didn't have much to go to the down campus, but we always did have to go for the bus pass renewals and paying off fees. And it was a harrowing time because buses were very few and far between. So we used that little break in the wall and then we used to make our way behind the Chelam hostel, you know, on the Pagdanti, which would lead from the Russian center and climb up behind the JNU, uh, the Chelam hostel. And even if it was evening, I, I don't think that JNU had any issues of safety of women or, you know, even men in terms of the normal crimes. And it was, it was a sudden, you know, oasis of freedom, freedom of movement, freedom of thought, even of speech. And uh, Obhijit mentions a wonderful thing in his book. He says that JNU is really not known by its walls, it is known by its rocks. So I think that, you know, the geography, the sense of geography <coughs> was extremely enticing. And JNU remains, you know, as much a land of rocks as it used to be. The evenings are wonderful, especially when it rains and you can see the sky turn purple. It's, it's a wonderful, the geography remains very much the same. It's an ecological habitat, much that sort of made brains think uh, very actively and hectically. Uh, today's chair is Nalini Ranjan Mohanty. Uh, Nalini Ranjan Mohanty is known as NR. And he is uh, quite an infamous person in the sense he was the JNU president in, in 1983. And probably his aggression led to that huge watershed of JNU. And they say that after the 1983, until the Mandal Commission, I think that is one phase of JNU which in many ways has not only marked uh, a very long phase of JNU, but after 1983, after Nalini Ranjan Mohanty's presidentship, JNU entered, which Abhijit also will mention in his book, had some very major change in composition of the student and therefore in its sociology um, of the campus. Uh, Nalini Ranjan Mohanty remains an incorrigible JNU, right? Because although he's been an editor in Hindustan Times in Patna, and then he's been work, working for India TV, where he has been the planning and the executive uh, person, the main person behind the Indian, India television. But uh, now he teaches, he teaches, of course, he has to pay his bills, so he teaches. And he does research in the Jagaran Institute of uh, Media and Management. But he is an incorrigible JNU, right? Because he still has his political motivations. He works on intense research on poverty. He tries to get citizens groups and uh, do citizen journalism. He then negotiates the relationship of the government and media and all kinds of things which are uh, all wrong, you know, as JNUIs would always do. Abhijit has also written a wrong book. When you read the book, you will find that he has also written a wrong book in the sense that he has not tried to glorify JNU. He has tried to show JNU in its highest common factor, HCF. His character enters JNU, who is absolutely a very medium kind of a student. He's totally average. And then he comes from a small town and encounters this vast institution, which is called JNU, the premier institution in the country. And, and how his mind works, what he sees, what he faces. And the kind of characteristics which JNU brings up, like if you are not a Marxist, you are a lesser human being, you know, you have to be either very good in academics and if you are not in politics is your refuge, 
Sports you don't play. JNU looks down on sports. Absolutely. I mean, what's, what's all that about? And uh, then you are not supposed to be a winner in JNU either because you are not a loser in any form of life. So if you are not a loser, JNU has no concept of a loser. And if you are not a loser, then you are not a winner as well. You know, I was watching this movie on three, uh, called Three Idiots where Bhumani Rani says that kya main aapke kaan mein bolu ki you have got A plus and aap fail ho gaye. Actually, JNU used to do that because our grades were never publicized. You know, our grades were all very private affairs so we never developed any kind of competitiveness amongst ourselves. And that probably explains the community and explains this intellectual freedom. I think that, you know, when you read the book, uh, uh, through the, uh, when JNU is really not glorified, it has got its fantastic vernacular characters. There are marriages in the Arya Samaj. There are, you know, 